I'm going to be conducting an experiment to estimate Planck's constant. I'll be using some LEDs for that. You can see one of the LEDs is turned on here. So what we're going to be doing is adjusting the voltage across LEDs of different colours and finding the threshold voltage at which light is just emitted. At the point that an LED is just emitting light, then electrons that are moving across the LED are giving up their energy to just one photon. And we'll know the wavelength of the photon from here, and therefore we know the frequency. So we have a way of deducing the photon energy, E equals HF. But we also now know the input energy. The photon energy is the output energy. Because we, if we measure the voltage across the LED and we determine this threshold voltage, this is my voltmeter here, then we can work out how much energy is going into the creation of that photon because it's the energy given to an electron moving across the LED. So the voltage multiplied by the charge on an electron, which we already know, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, that gives us the input energy. So then we have a way of knowing the energy from our photon energy equation and the frequency because we know the wavelength of the LEDs. So we know two of the three variables in that equation, we can then rearrange that for Planck's constant. Now, of course, we will be conducting this experiment for a range of different wavelengths. You can see I have seven LEDs here. So what we'll do is we will plot frequency against photon energy coming from the different threshold voltages that we'll get. And then using the graph, we'll be able to use the gradient to estimate Planck's constant. Okay, so that's the general concept of what we're doing. Let me explain the equipment that I'll be using here. So this is a custom made array of LEDs here, and they've got the wavelengths written on there. There are seven LEDs. Uh, those of you who are on the ball will have noticed that two of them lie outside of the visible range. I'll talk a bit more about those in a moment. But there we go, we have our seven LEDs for which we know the wavelengths. And over here, uh, th this is the switch, so I can switch between LEDs. You'll see I'll be able to switch to the different colored LEDs here. Okay, you can see when I switch to more, you won't see anything at the moment. I'm filming this on my iPhone and they have a pretty good infrared filter. You might be able to see just this one here, 850, but I'm pretty sure the 950 is out of range. Um, so yeah, they, they have a good infrared filter, so they, you won't be able to see those very clearly. Then we have the voltmeter connected across. This is in parallel to the LED, so that's my voltmeter. And then this is a variable resistor, which allows me to control the voltage across the LED. And as you can see, as I adjust the resistance here, you can see the voltage is changing and the brightness of the LED is changing. Okay. So that gives me a way to control the voltage across here and how much energy is be given to electrons as they move across there. Now I mentioned there are two infrared LEDs here. We can't see those with our eye, but digital cameras are sensitive to infrared light. So what I'll be doing is positioning this camera across here. When I switch to one of the LEDs here, just to demonstrate the fact be able to see that. So this is the 850 nanometer LED here. If I adjust the voltage, can you see that LED getting brighter? Yep, and dimmer. So we do have a way of observing the infrared LED using this camera. So these, both of these LEDs, I'll use the, this digital camera to observe those. I'll be recording all my data into a spreadsheet. I'll just quickly show you that. So I've color coded the LEDs on the first column and then written the wavelengths down because they're already stated on our device here. And then I'll put the voltages in there. Okay, so we're ready to start taking some measurements. In order to make the measurements as accurate as possible, I'll reduce the background light. So I can turn the light off here. I'm actually just lighting up the room with this torch. And when I need to, I can go to a low 
power settings so I can just illuminate the voltmeter over here for taking voltage readings. Right, as I said, let's get ready to take some measurements. So I don't need the camera at this stage, so I'll just put, it, put this over here. And now we can start, we're gonna start with the 430 nanometer LED and increase this way, and then I'll go back the other way. Okay, so this is the 430 nanometer LED. Let's turn this off. And I'm going to decrease the voltage across that now. We've got a little bit of light coming from the power supply there, but it should be okay. So I think I'll make that the point where it's just gone out. So we take a reading now. Okay, it's 1.52. So I need to adjust the potentiometer again so that the voltage is increased across the LED. Okay. And now we can see the LED again. I'm going to switch to the next one. This is the 505 nanometer LED, so I'm going to decrease the voltage. You can see it getting dimmer. Okay, I'll make that the point where it's just gone out. That is 1.23 volts. Increase the voltage again and switch to the next LED. This LED is 560 nanometers. Okay, just that point there. That's 0 0.92 volts. Increase the voltage there. And if we go to the next one, 615 nanometers. Okay, I'll make that little point. 0 0.86 volts. Next LED is 655 nanometers. Zero point eight zero volts. And now you can see we're going on to 850 nanometers. This is the first infrared LED. Let's see if that's... Actually, you can just about see a faint glow on the camera. But I'm going to use this video camera for detection. So let's position this one. Okay, so if I shine this under here, you can see... The camera is, is right above the 850 nanometer LED. Okay, so that bright dot in the middle is what we're looking at. Now I need to just find the potentiometer again. Here we go. And decreasing across here. There's quite a lot of interference from the screen itself, of course, but hopefully the additional data points it gives us will outweigh the negative of that. So I make that the point there. Okay, as you can see it's still over there and this is 0 0.70. Now I'll move this camera along slightly. Let's increase the voltage here so that we can view the LED. So there's our LED there, okay. Okay, let's decrease the voltage now. Okay, I make that the point. And this final data point for the first set of readings is 0 0.61 volts. Okay, now I'm going to repeat the experiment. I'm gonna drop this potentiometer right down. So the voltage across the LED is 
considerably lower than this and then increase until it just becomes visible on the monitor here. So you can see I'm going to decrease the voltage. Okay, so the voltage is going right down here. And then I'm going to increase until I can see the LED just start to glow on the screen. Okay, so those are all the readings. Now all that remains to be done is to plot a graph and analyze that, and that'll be in video too.